A very warm welcome to all of you to this lecture on thermohaline circulation. This lecture is a part of NRC in Marine Science. I will be talking to you about thermohaline circulation. The circulation in the ocean is driven by both winds and thermohaline forcing. The upper one kilometer of the ocean roughly is driven by the wind forcing. There are currents like Gulf Stream, Kuroshivo and Somali current which are driven by the wind forcing. The thermohaline circulation is a part of the ocean circulation that is driven by both thermal corresponding to temperature and haline corresponding, corresponding to saline forcing. Today I will be teaching you about thermohaline circulation. The lecture is divided into four parts. And in these four parts, I would be covering the features of the thermohaline circulation, the physical processes that basically control thermohaline circulation, some simple theory of thermohaline circulation, and some impacts of climate change on THC. This is a simple picture of thermohaline circulation, a schematic. This is also known as Broker's conveyor belt after the scientist William Broker who drew this picture for the first time. In this picture, a parcel of water that sinks in the northern hemisphere flows over the entire volume of the ocean and ultimately returns to its points of origin. And since the water parcel returns to its original point of sinking, this schematic of circulation is called as a conveyor belt. The thermohaline circulation is also known as meridional overturning circulation because in the process of traveling through the conveyor belt, the entire parcel undergoes an overturning of circulation. How did this all come about? Let me tell you a short story. In fact, a true incident. This happened in 1751 and this happened on board the ship Earl of Halifax. Earl of Halifax was sailing in the tropical Pacific. The captain of the ship, Captain Ellis, managed to measure the temperature of the ocean up to a depth of about 5600 feet. Now remember this Measurement was done in the tropical Pacific. This was done at 25 degrees north and 25 degrees west. This is tropical Pacific and the air is warm. On the deck of the ship, it was hot and humid. The temperature measured by Captain Ellis at the surface was about 28 degrees. Now, to his surprise, the water that he brought from a depth of roughly 1000 meters had a temperature of just 11 degrees centigrade. The water in the deep ocean was cold. This was very surprising to the captain because he was in a tropical location and he had no idea how such cold water could exist in a tropical location even though it was deep. This profile is, is drawn using modern data. This is from World Ocean Atlas. There are two profiles here. The black one corresponds to temperature with the scale drawn to the top. On the vertical axis, there is depth in meters running from 0 to 1,500 meters. The black curve shows that the temperature near the surface is roughly 24 degrees centigrade, which is warm. And the water at a depth of 1,500 meters has a temperature of about 6 degrees centigrade. The measurements made by the ship captain long time ago has been confirmed by repeated measurements that the surface layers of the ocean is warm and as you go deeper and deeper, the water gets cooler. Let me show you another example. This profile is from the tropical Indian Ocean. This is from 15 degrees north, 65 degrees east in the Arabian Sea. This is another 
tropical location. In this profile, we can see the temperature distribution from the surface up to a depth of about 4 kilometers. The vertical axis is in depth and this is 4000 meters or 4 kilometers. Again, the water near the surface is warm. It is at 28 degrees, whereas once you go to the deep ocean, the water is cooler and at 4000 meters, the water is just about 2 degrees centigrade. The deep water in all the ocean basins are cold. Now, where does the tropical oceans get such cold waters? Some idea can be obtained from a map of the global sea surface temperature distribution. This figure shows the global map of sea surface temperature distribution. The purple and blue shading shows the water which is cold and the yellow and red shading shows warmer waters. The tropical ocean is warm. The water is mostly above a temperature of 24 degrees and above. Whereas the water in the higher latitude in the polar region is relatively cooler. So, the water from the polar regions have to travel into through the deep ocean into the tropical regions so that we can have cooler waters in the deeper regions of Indian and Pacific Oceans. This figure shows the major elements of global meridional overturning circulation. There are different color shadings here. The green shading shows the flow of deep water. The red and orange shows the flow of intermediate and uh, surface water. And the pink shading shows the path of the return flow to the Atlantic. In the schematic, there are water parcel sinking in selected regions such as the Greenland Sea, the Rab Labrador Sea, the Weddell Sea and the Ross Sea. The water parcel sinks, flows southward in the Atlantic, joins the Antarctic circumpolar current which flows around Antarctica. There are connections from the Antarctic circumpolar current to the Pacific and Indian Oceans. In the Pacific, there is flow of warm water through the Indian Ocean through flow region into the Indian Ocean at the surface. The water then flows along the coast of Africa and enters into the Atlantic. This joins the Gulf Stream and finally returns to the sinking regions of the Greenland and Labrador Sea. From this picture, it can be seen that there are different elements of the circulation. The first element is sinking, the second is spreading, the third is upwelling of deeper waters and the fourth is near surface flow. The sinking is highly localized. It happens only in few selected regions. Those regions are the Greenland and Norwegian seas, the Labrador Sea, the Mediterranean Sea, the Ross Sea and the Weddell Sea. The water that sinks spreads and the spreading happens mainly through two water masses. These are the North Atlantic deep water and Antarctic bottom water. The spreading is promoted also by the deep western boundary currents. The third component of thermohaline circulation is upwelling. The deep water that flows into different ocean basins have to upwell to the thermocline and surface waters. This upwelling happens in all the ocean basins and it is very slow and it is spread over a large area. There is also a large amount of upwelling happening in the Antarctic Circumpolar Current. 
The fourth component of the thermohaline circulation is the return flow. The return flow is required to close the loop of the global conveyor belt. The return flow happens through the wind driven circulation. The water that upwells in the ocean basins from the deep into the thermocline and surface regions joins the surface wind driven circulation. And this circulation then ultimately joins the sinking regions to complete the loop of global thermohaline circulation. A very important component of this thermohaline circulation is the deep convection and sinking. In fact, this is the heart of the thermohaline circulation. So, let us look at the process of deep convection and sinking in some detail in the next part of this lecture. Thank you.